overlooked aspect of poker vlogs in my opinion is the lack of home game videos. I've played in people's home games all across the United States and I know you guys appreciate it, but just to be sure, comment down below if you like me breaking up the casino videos with some home game vlogs here and there. Tonight is Jose's game, there's pizza, drinks, and David even brought mini bunt cakes for Michelle's birthday. It's gonna be a fun time. Let's kick off the session here with 5-4 of clubs from the small blind. Few limps over to me, so I decided to complete. A little bit of a strange play for me. Normally you'd uh, see me raising or folding out of the small blind, but I decide to complete here. Don't roast me, Alvin. And we are off to a flop. Flop comes queen 7 6 all hearts, and the action checks around. Obviously, I'm going to check multi way here on this board. Three hearts out there, monotone, a little bit scary. I do have the open and straight draw, but when the action checks around, we are off to the turn, which comes the ace of clubs. I'm not going to change too much from my position in the small blind, so I decide to check, and the action checks around on the turn. Nothing too exciting to report just yet. We're off to a river though, but it is exciting. It comes the eight of spades, giving me the straight. Not gonna put a bang out there because someone could be slow playing a flush. Instead, I decide to bet out for pot of $15. Michelle raises it up to $30 and the action's back over to me. Now let's take a few things into consideration. She decides to raise me on this river. Could she have a hand like 910? Could she have pocket eights? Sure. Let's also not discount the fact that her birthday's coming up, so I decide just to put in the flat call for $15. I don't want to get into a war here, seeing another raise, and then I'm in a weird spot. I just call, and my spidey senses were tingling, and I was right. She had 10-9 offsuit. So yeah, she's going to take down that first hand of the night. What an action river card. Moving right along, early position here with kings, a beautiful sight, and I decide to raise it up to $15. We're going to get three callers. That means we are four ways out of position to a flop. Flop's pretty great for us. It comes queen at 9-4 with two spades. We have the range advantage on this board. I'm going to have all the aces, kings, pocket queens. I'm also going to have all the nut flush draws like ace king of spades, ace five of spades. So when the action's on me, I decide to bet out for $30. I think 30 is a good price here. You want to size up on this board when you're multi-way and when there's a lot of draws out there like 10 jack and the spade draws. So yeah, I decided to bet 30 bucks, and the big blind, Doug, he decides to put in the call, so that means we are off to the turn, heads up. The turn isn't the best one, because some of his flush draws now have top pair. It comes the ace of hearts, and Doug checks it over to me for a second time. I like both options here of betting or checking. Obviously, checking with the reasoning I just told you about the ace high flush draw now making a pair, but betting also has some merit because a lot of the draws are still just draws, like 10 jack, and a lot of his king and jack high flush draws are still just draws. So, so yeah, I could see it going either way here on the turn, but I decided to check behind and see what comes off on the river, which pairs the board. It comes a nine of clubs. Really shouldn't change too much. I don't think he's calling on the flop with a nine, but now he's telling the story that he could have when he bets out for $75. At this point, it's uh, one of a few hands. He either could have an ace and is going for value. He could have a nine and is going for value. He could be overvaluing a queen, uh, just discrediting that a little bit. It seems a little bit ambitious to put him on a queen here. Or he could be bluffing with a lot of missed draws. Ten jack immediately comes to mind and all those spade flush draws. I didn't get invited to a home game to fold pocket kings on just one overcard of a board. So I decide to put in the call. I'm hoping he has one of those bluffs that I just mentioned. Sure enough, he does. He turns over five deuce of spades. So busted spades on the flop. Picked up a ton of outs on the turn. But no bueno. We're taking on that $256 pot. Up $100 on the session. All right, we're going to try something fun here. I got roasted in my last video. If you guys didn't know, I read all the comments. So definitely leave me one down below. But Jan from Agua Caliente told me that I talk too much. So yeah, we're going to try out this hand the way that you would like it, apparently. And everyone else, bear with me if this is your first time watching. This is how Jan wants the poker vlog to go. I have cards. Queen 10. I raise 15. Two people call. Flop comes 10-9-2. Wade checks. I check. Jason checks. Dealer puts one card down. It comes the five of diamonds. Wade checks again. I bet $15. Wade calls again, the dealer puts another card again, it comes the four of spades. Wade checks one more time, I bet one more time. Wade folds, I win. $80 in my stack, yay! Thanks for watching to the end of my video. All right, I like my way better than Jan's. We're back into your regular scheduled programming. Ace King offsuit from the big blind. Few limps over to me, so I raise it up to $15. We're gonna get called in two spots here. That means we are three ways to the flop. 
Flop comes 9-4-3, and it's a terrible board for our range. The other two opponents should have this absolutely crushed with pocket fours, pocket threes, five six suited. The only caveat is I do in fact have the ace of clubs in my hand. Let's see if that comes into play later on the turn or the river. Given the fact I do have the ace of clubs in my hand, I decide to lead out on this board. I think given the fact there's two other opponents in the hand, I really should just be checking. But instead, I decide to bet out for $15, and both players put in the call. That means we are still three ways to the turn, which comes the jack of spades. When they call me on the flop, they could be doing this with fours or threes. Although I think with all the draws out there, they really should just be raising. So I'm discrediting a lot of that. It's a lot of 9x, like 9-8, 10-9, and a lot of uh, club flush draws, although I do have the ace of clubs in my hand blocking the nut flush draw from their hands. When the turn comes a jack of spades, it's a card that should connect with me a lot better. I'm going to have pocket jacks, ace jack, and king jack, so I decide to continue representing that I have the best hand and I bet out for $35. Greg gets out of the way, but Doug decides to put in the call, bringing in that club, the deuce of clubs on the river. Now, Doug kind of played this like he had a club draw, so obviously this card would not be good if that was the exact hand I'm putting him on, but at the same time, he could have a plethora of other hands. He could have 8-9, 9-10, he could even have a hand like pocket 10s or pocket 8s. So I think one more bet on this river will get a lot of those hands to fold and we'll get just the club draws and the sets to call us. So I decide to go into my bag of tricks here and bluff with the ace of clubs in my hand to the tune of $70. Now Doug goes into the tank. He cuts out the chips but thinks about it for a while and then eventually he finds a call which is not great news for me. I'm not going to give him the satisfaction right away. I turn over the ace of clubs, followed by the king of diamonds, expecting to see a flush or a set. Instead, he called me light with 8-9 offsuit, and he's going to get rewarded with that $306 pot. Nice call, Doug. Right, we had to top on for additional $100. I looked down at 10-7 of spades from the button. Hijack Doug opens it up to $13, and I decide just to put in the call, not really advising this with 10-7 suited, but we're at a home game. Doug just got me on that bluff. So let's put in the call and see if we can see three cards on the flop. One of the arguments against just flat calling when there's players behind is that they can come in for a re-raise, and that's exactly what Jason decides to do. He makes it $41. Doug now gets out of the way. His opening range was a little bit weak there, and I decide 10-7 suited. Let's go to battle with it. I toss in a green chip, and we are off to the flop, which is terrible. It comes King Jack 3 with two diamonds. Surprisingly, Jason checks it over to me. I say that because this is a board he's going to have a lot of great things on. He's going to have hands like Ace King, Ace Jack, Pocket Jacks, Pocket Kings, and me just calling Doug's bet and then calling Jason's bet. I'm never going to have any of those hands, so he should just be betting the crap out of me. But instead, he checks it over to me. I'm not going to fall into any trap here in case he has one of those hands and is slow playing. I decided to check behind, seeing if I can improve with maybe a Queen, a Nine, Maybe a 10 or a 7 would give me the best hand, but who knows? We are off to the turn, which comes the 6 of clubs. He now decides to bet out for $35, and I'm not putting any more money in the middle. I muck my cards, and we're on to the next one where I look down at my favorite hand, pocket 7s. Also have to let you know that it topped up for an additional $200. We're in the big blind with $300 in my stack. Few limps to the hijack who raises it up to $10. The button puts in the call, and I have my favorite hand. And I should be putting a 3-bet in here a large portion of the time. I make it $40. If everyone folds, we pick up around $25 bucks in dead money. If people call, though, we're going off to a flop and maybe a run out with my favorite hand. So life's pretty good at this point. Two people decide to put in the call. The hijack does as well. And then the button. So we are literally going five ways to the flop. And you know what I'd love to see on this board? Obviously, something like A77 would be ideal. Are we going to get that? Absolutely not. The flop comes Jack-10 Deuce Rainbow. This is not my home game. It's Jose's home game. And uh, yeah, the cards are not with me at this point. The action checks over to the hijack who decides to bet out for 85 bucks. And we all fold. So pretty boring hand. Would have loved it to have been Jack-Jack-7. That would have just been absolutely nuts. But instead, $204 getting shipped another opponent's way. Story of the night. Getting into the wee hours of the morning now, and Jose decides to raise the cap from $300 to $500. So I'm going to top up for an additional $500. And of course, we get rewarded right away with the ladies. As soon as you pull the money out, the ladies come running. I raise it up to $15. And the plus one and the button both put in the call. 
We find ourselves in a three-way with the ladies. Ace, nine, eight comes the flop. Of course, when you have pocket queens or pocket kings, there's always an ace on the flop. Terrible, terrible stuff. I decided to bet out for $25, though. I'm going to represent pocket aces and ace king and ace queen. The player in the plus one position, Jason, he puts in the call. So we're heads up to the turn, which comes the deuce of diamonds. Still going to be representing all those strong aces in my range. He could have a lot of draws here, like 10 jack, 10 seven, maybe even seven six or those club draws. So I'm going to keep betting here to the tune of 40 bucks. Jason decides to wisely get out of the way. He knows the power of the ladies. I'm going to take down that $99 pot. Finally, some chips going in the right direction. All right, three hands to go. We have 500 in my stack. I look down at ace king offsuit from middle position. One limp over to me from Doug and I decide to raise it up to $15. Player on the button puts in the call and Doug on my right puts in the call as well. That means we are going three ways to the flop, which comes queen seven three with two diamonds. Doug checks it over to me and if you guys bought my training course for $69, the link is down below in the description. You'll know that when you're in between two opponents, it's advisable to start with a check on the flop. That's what I decided to do. I'm going to make my poker coach happy and check. And David checks behind, bringing in one of the best cards in the deck, the King of Diamonds. It does complete the flush draw, but it gives me top pair, top kicker. And I like my chances in this hand now. When the turn comes at King of Diamonds, Doug decides to lead out for $30. And I'm going nowhere. I decide to put in the call. I think a raise is just not a great move. It's only going to get me called by better hands like sets and flushes. So when I put in the call, David gets out of the way. And we are off to the river, which comes the Nine of Spades. Doug now slows down and checks it over to me. So I'm going to go for a little bit of value. I know there's a flush draw out there, but I have top pair, top kicker. I can get called by a plethora of random hands like queen X, king X, maybe even jacks or tens. Who knows? He checks it over to me. I bet out for $45. Going to get a little bit of my money back from Doug here when he puts in the call. He's not getting those back. I turn over top pair, top kicker. He mucks his cards. The rest is history. $200 coming my way. All right, I got some exciting news for everyone in Toledo, Ohio, or the surrounding areas. I got a meetup game at the Reserve Poker Club in Toledo, Ohio, this Saturday, January 14th. That's two days from now if you're watching this on Thursday. Saturday, 2 to 7 p.m., I'll be playing friendly cash games all day long and filming a vlog. It's 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 5 type games. And then from 7 p.m. on, I'm playing 5, 10, 20 live on YouTube. It's a live stream game. That's on Saturday as well. Come out to the Reserve Poker Club. I'll be hosting a meetup game and I look forward to seeing you guys there. All right, this one is a fun one. Occasionally in this game, there'll be bomb pots. For instance, if the Ace of Spades comes out, if the King of Hearts come out, there'll be bomb pots or pineapple hands. This one is a $10 bomb pot eight ways. And of course I look down at a premium pocket tens. No option for me to raise it preflop. We are off to two boards, which comes seven, six, six, giving me an overpair and ace, 10, three, bang. We flop middle set on the bottom. It's gonna be very hard for me to be beat on both boards. The only hand that I can see right now that would have me beat is pocket aces because they'd have a better set on bottom. Other than that, we're trapping against any hand on the top board that has a six in it. And the action checks to me, let's start to build the size of the pot. I bet out for $30 and three people decide to put in the call. That's pretty great news in these bomb pots. You wanna put money in and then end up chopping it. Since three other people put in the call, that means two of those people are getting their money chopped at this moment. We are off to the turn on both boards. Turn comes the deuce of diamonds on top and the king of diamonds on the bottom. Really doesn't change too much, although we now are losing on both boards to pocket kings. Michelle in the plus one now takes the initiative and bets out for $80. Pretty weird spot for me. I think a raise is overplaying my hand. With three other opponents in there, they're most likely chopping against a six. Maybe someone could have queen jack as well, I guess, but I don't know how they call the flop with that. Unless they had like queen jack of hearts. So I'm not going to be raising here. I just decided to put in the call and Jose on the button puts in the call as well. Got to be careful of a few things on the river, but still we are three ways and the top board comes the four of spades followed by the eight of clubs on the bottom. Michelle now does not slow down. She bets out for $200. Once again, I'm not going to be raising here for the reasons I mentioned above. So I decide just to put in the call and one of the positives of just calling instead of raising is it could bring in Jose and if he's not good in this spot and decides to put in the 200 because he's getting a good price, we're going to chop his money, which is exactly what happens. Jose puts in the call as well for $200. Let's see who has the goods here in this over a thousand dollar pot. Michelle turns over six deuce of clubs. So she has three of a kind on top. I turn over my set on the bottom. And Jose mucks his cards showing the ace of clubs. Not exactly sure what he had there. But just like that, we're going to take down $500 from this pot. 
which are definitely some much needed chips in this session. Moving right along to the last hand of the night, I looked down at ace three of clubs from under the gun and I raised it up to $15. We're gonna get three callers, that means we are four ways to a flop, which comes a seven five rainbow. Wade in the big blind decides to bet out for $25. I put in the call and Greg on the button puts in the call as well. My logic for calling here is I have an overcard and I have a backdoor flush draw. Not really much else going on. You probably should be folding this like 80% of the time, but uh, this is a spot here I decided to flick in the call. Had only a few hands left in the session, so I wanted to give a little bit more action. And let's see what the turn card brings in. It comes the king of diamonds. When Wade checks it over to me, the king of diamonds is an interesting card. I say that because I raise it up to $15 pre-flop, so I'm gonna have all the strong kings in my range. Greg and Wade really can't. And by Greg not raising on the flop, I don't think he has a hand like pocket fives, pocket sevens, pocket eights. I think those would probably wanna put in more money on the flop, considering it's a decently wet board. So I'm gonna represent this king when Wade checks it over to me and I bet out for $40. It's a small bet, so I'm just kinda of feeling where I'm at and trying to get one hand to fold some sort of equity. Greg puts in the call, but Wade gets out of the way. So we do thin the field. We're now heads up with Greg to the river. And also by Greg just calling this turn, I'm pretty much eliminating all the sets from his range. By me betting here, I'm saying I have ace king, king queen, king jack. So if he doesn't raise here, I don't know why he wouldn't, right? If he had pocket sevens and you're putting me on a king, let's get some more money in and play for stacks by the river. It's really also hard to put him on a straight, like six, nine or six, four, pretty random hands to have. So I'm putting him on a one or two pair type hand like eight, nine, eight, seven, seven, five, stuff like that. We're gonna bet here on the turn and then fire big on the river. River card comes a four of diamonds, which connects the board a little bit. Any six is now gonna have a straight, but I didn't bet on the turn to give up by the river. So I decided to put them all in for $154 effective. Greg thinks about it for a while. At first he counts out my chips and then he looks at his stack and he realizes that I bet exactly the amount of chips he has. He chuckles before folding. And that's gonna get a chuckle out of me when I win with the worst hand, most likely ace three offsuit. He confirms I did have the worst hand, but uh, the worst hand's getting paid here. $216 coming my way. And that's gonna wrap up this session. I was down early on in the session, stuck $500, but I battled back and let's see how much I cashed out for. All right, you guys, that wraps up that one, two game here at the Casa de Jose, Jose's house here in the outskirts of Chicago. Got into that for 300. Ended up topping up like another hundred, another That's hundred, funny. another hundred. We were in for 900 bucks, got out for 824, a loss of 76 bucks. But you know how you can get me back for that loss. I'm gonna drop Jose's address down in the comments. Come show up and knock on the door and get my money back. I lost 76 bucks. Drop in the comments if you guys show up to Jose's house. But no, in all seriousness, thanks for uh, following on this video. If you guys are new here, drop a subscribe, a like, and a comment. Good luck on the felt as always, you guys. Hope you run better than I did tonight, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.